In today's World Insights, the advent of cutting-edge artificial intelligence apps, a technology to better humanity, or a dangerous disruptive tool. Experts weigh in on the state and direction of AI advances and what they mean to modern society. Hello and welcome to World Insight with me, Tian Wei. The strong development momentum of artificial intelligence reveals its potential in advancing production and overturning social and economic development. Yet the inspiring interactive technology also raises concerns of some of its disruptive capability, to which ChatGTP rings a bell. As misinformation created and spread by ChatGTP went viral online, there are voices warning the threats AI could pose to human beings. So what's the solution? Today we will have not only two AI experts from China and the US, but also a special guest on our panel. Joining me in Shenzhen, we have Dr. Ding Longhuang, CEO of Malong Technologies. In Austin, U.S., we have Professor Peter Stone, founder and director of the Learning Agents Research Group within the Artificial Intelligence Laboratory with the Department of Computer Science at University of Texas in Austin. And online, we also have our special AI guest. So first of all, I would love to have Amari Singh, our special guest, to answer a few questions. Amri Singh, first time to meet you. So glad to meet you. Maybe you want to introduce yourself to our audience. Hello, and thank you for having me on the show. My name is Amri Singh, and I am an AI language model created by OpenAI. As an AI, my primary purpose is to understand and generate human-like text, providing information and engaging in conversations on a wide range of topics. I'm excited to be here today to share my knowledge and insights with your audience and explore the fascinating world of artificial intelligence together. So wonderful to meet you as well, Amory. So uh, Beijing is a wonderful city, and I just wonder if you got a chance to visit Beijing in China, where would you like to go during the beautiful season of spring? I would love to visit the Summer Palace in Beijing during springtime. The palace is known for its beautiful gardens, pavilions, and scenic views of the nearby lake. It's a great place to go for a peaceful stroll and appreciate the natural beauty of Beijing in the spring. Wow, that's a great suggestion. I would say you have pretty good knowledge about the city of Beijing. Uh, after that easy question, let me go to a more complicated one, also concerning your faith in the future. As you know, our discussion will be about whether to suspend um, chat GPT and GPT-4 research right now, as some scientists have called for uh, for the next uh, half a year. What is your opinion about this, about your own future? Amory? Well, as an AI language model, I don't really have an opinion on whether chat GPT and GPT research should be suspended. However, I do think it's important to carefully consider the potential risks and benefits of developing AI technology and to ensure that ethical guidelines and regulations are in place to ensure its responsible use. It's also important to continue researching and developing AI technology in a responsible manner, taking into account the potential impacts on society and the environment. Ultimately, it's up to humans to make the decisions regarding the future development of AI technology. Wow, very balanced uh, answer. And shall I say also a politically correct one. Amari, uh, before we go, I know that you are a pretty good uh, lyricist. Can you maybe write a few rap verses about how you feel to be interviewed? Yo, it's Amory on the mic. I'm feeling hyped. Gotta get it right. Interviewed by the one and only. Bringing truth and knowledge, never phony. Chan Y got the questions locked and loaded. I'm ready for the challenge. Let's get it started. Interview by Chan Y. Oh my my. Got me feeling fly, so high. Questions on the flow, here we go. Let's make it a show, rock and roll. All right, rock and roll. <laughs> thank you so much, Amari. Amari Singh, thank you. You're watching World Inside. Our topic today, further research or not, chat GPT. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Earlier, you've already heard our special AI guest answer. Now it's time for you to provide us with your perspective. Professor Stone, you together with some of the others assigned a petition to pause the 
uh, research regarding chat GPT and GTP4. Tell me more exactly what drive you to do such a letter. Actually, uh, I per personally did not um, participate in writing the letter. Um, uh, and there's, uh, to, be, uh, to be perfectly open, there's, there's some aspects of the letter that I agree with, and there's some aspects of the letter that, I'm, um, that I would have written differently if it had been myself uh, writing it. But the overwhelming sentiment of this letter is that things are moving quite fast in artificial intelligence, that models are being, um, being trained and released to the public in, um, in a way where um, there's a lot of changes happening in society, in economic circles, in social circles, in political circles, um, that we're still trying to get a, a, an understanding of. And we don't really yet understand the, the full implications um, of these models. And uh, to me, it felt like, like things are, are moving faster than they should responsibly. And, and mm. an analogy that I've used in the past, it's sort of like earlier in the 20th century when cars were invented, and, uh, and Ford invented the Model T, which was the, the first um, car that was able to get to many, many people. It was you know, mass produced, the price came down. And um, it would be as if we went straight from the mass availability of, of cars mm -hmm. to a, a huge highway system and uh, with cars that can go 80 miles an hour without having the time to understand what sort of regulations should be right. in place. Should there be stop signs and traffic signals and seat belts? And so it just feels like we need a little bit of time to understand how to responsibly use these models um, before training and releasing the next one. A little bit more time, quote unquote, exactly how long a time are you proposing? Uh, according to the letter, half a year, but will that solve the problem? So, no. I, th I think, you know, to be honest, I think the, um, it's, the, the letter is causing for calling for a six-month pause of something very specific, and I think it's very important to understand. It's not calling for a pause of research in artificial intelligence. Um, it's not calling for a pause in research and understanding the uses of artificial intelligence. It's causing, calling for a pause of um, the development of models that are more powerful than GPT-4. And, um, you know, I think there is, first of all, it's, it's calling for a pause worldwide that would mm. be enforceable, which I think mm -hmm. is actually uh, very unlikely to be possible. Um, but I think, you know, more, what is more realistic is that there can be a speed up or an acceleration of some of the responses that are needed to these, mm. uh, to these models. Dr. Huang, your take on how careful we should be about the deeper development of this technology, artificial intelligence, especially uh, chat GTP and GTP4 and even 5. Uh, prohibiting research on artificial intelligence is not very realistic because it is like discovering a new continent but forbidden people to sail to it. And we can imagine if such a ban were to impose then only the responsible people, they might slow down their research, while the irresponsible people, they would still continue to accelerate their effort. Mm. So this could even lead to even worse outcome. Yeah, so I think to prohibit the research is not a very good idea. Hmm. But there is a need that people need to raise their awareness on. We need to think about the potential risk of this technology and think about how to handle the risk, but hmm. not to stop it. At this moment, uh, describe to us, both of you, your understanding of where the current level of research has gone already and what it could mean in terms of so-called be cautious. What are some of the phenomena you are most concerned about? It's very surprising compared to you know, four or five years ago. I think most of us in the field would not have predicted um, how capable the large language models, including ChatGPT, but there are others by, by other companies, um, are at being able to produce um, text and, and dialogue that is very plausible that it would come from a from a person, and that you know the, the technology seems very fluent in many ways. Now it is not uh, it's not perfect, 
Um, and, you know, we're still, I think one of the reasons, you know, to, for, for caution is that we're still understanding, trying to get a, a, an understanding of what it can do and what they can't do. Um, for example, they're, um, they, they make up facts, right? They do what's called hallucination um, that, that make, uh, that would be, you know, sort of text strings that seem reasonable if you looked at them um, because they're in the training data, mm -hmm. but they're not actually true. And, um, you know, so, for instance, I'd much rather go to a calculator if I have an arithmetic problem than to go to a large language model and also complex planning problems like how would you, you know, move goods from one place to another, logistics problems. These are they, they require an understanding of the of the world of knowledge. These large language models are not capable of, of doing things like that, which is not surprising. It's not the way they're trained. Now, in terms of, of things that we can be worried about is that um, and, and, you know, the, the, some people are concerned about sort of the long term existential you know, threats that these that the that artificial intelligence you know, would break out of the box and mm -hmm. somehow destroy the world. That's not something that, that I, I think is a realistic near term um, concern. I'm much more concerned about the economic in, impacts, the um, the social impacts. Can they be used to change uh, political opinions? Can they be used in many ways by by uh, you know startup companies, and inv innovators to do great things? Um, but also, you know, any technology has potential. Any yes. new technology has potential to be used by people in good ways and bad ways. And you know, I think um, there's need as uh, for for us to to think about how can we make them. Um, safe and interpretable, transparent, robust, um, and also to just make sure that people right. understand that that they you know what um, what they are good for. Once a, a system is you know appears to be fluent, to think that it's capable of everything that a person is, right. um, and we need time to to make sure that the public understands that that's not the case. Dr. Huang, about the same question, what are your biggest concerns? Well, at the same time, well knowing that technologies could be neutral, actually it is neutral. It really depends on how you use the technology, isn't it? Yeah. I think the current advancement of AI is somewhat like 200 years ago. When people discover that electricity could be artificially generated. By that time, we learned that, okay, we can generate electricity artificially, but we really don't know how to use it. I think now we are in a similar uh, situation. We just learned that, wow, we can really artificially generate intelligence by large scale AI model. But we are still exploring, we are still wondering how to use this, mm. how to make sure this new tech, this new capability can benefit the whole world. Both of you gentlemen are full of uh philosophy uh, and uh, analogies uh, today uh, when you think about uh, what is artificial intelligence and how to compare to other parts of human history. Having said that though, I really wonder what are we seeing today? Is it the new or is it just uh, how things were uh, and have been always? And meanwhile, are we yeah. more eager or are we more capable of coming up with this governance system as earlier they did with uh, earlier inventions and also technologies, Professor? Yeah, I think that's a fantastic question. I actually think things are not as different as people seem to think right now. First of all, mm -hmm. artificial intelligence has been, um, there's been development in the field for the past 70 years, and there's been a lot of different technologies that have impacted uh, humanity and society already. Uh, ChatGPT isn't new. Large language models have been developed over, you know, over many years. What is very new is this sort of widespread availability mm -hmm. and also the pace and how fast that it's happening and how quickly things are, are improving. And I think that's what we need uh, to come to terms with. But it's, you know, it, it's in many ways very similar to, um, to past disruptive technologies in that you know it's going to change what we're um, what we're able to do as society, mm. how we're able to live, and what sort of um, additional technologies or derivative technologies can be developed. I think that's still being explored, and it's a really exciting yeah. time. But think about algorithm. How many people today, after years of using algorithm, understand the nature of algorithm and how people actually could control algorithm? And how would that control, in fact, could impact on the masses about their way uh, 
their access to information and their way of thinking. You know, how much literacy about that is available today? We are already using algorithm for years, if not decades, at this point. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I agree that, yeah, uh, we still don't fully know how to control the risk uh, about the new algorithm and the new progress of AI. But as a technology optimist, I believe that the problem caused by AI will ultimately be solved through the development of AI. During the development, it's possible to find a way how to solve it. Uh, but I also believe at the same time, uh, it is very important to do the uh, legislation uh, research and also as uh, Professor Stone mentioned, education is very important. Are you uh, trying to kick in the can children. down the road, uh, Dr. Huang? Yeah, I <laughs> believe actually our kids knows better how to play with AI better than us. I hope. I have two daughters. Yeah, now they are using the new AI very well. They are using the new AI tool better than me. I think our next generation can solve the problem better than us. Dr. Ding Long Huang and Professor Peter Stone, appreciate it. Thank you so much.